Both Representative Kern and Representative Fisher's bills passed through the committee and now they move to the House Calendar Committee for further consideration. Sean Ashley with eCapital has been watching these measures and many others this week at the Capitol. Sean, the state's rights committee is a new committee. What is its purpose? Well, when uh, Speaker Shannon announced the formation of this committee uh, back at the, in, in January, uh, he said what it would do would look at the relationship between the state of Oklahoma and, and the federal government. Uh, and as your piece has shown, uh, that takes on a variety of, of different forms. Uh, there are these federal laws like the Affordable Care Act, which they are in, in some cases simply trying to prevent from being implemented in the state of Oklahoma. In, in other cases, there was an interesting bill considered there the other day related to the Oklahoma Military Department and simply def better defining which employees of that department are state employees and which are federal employees. And of course, there are uh, bills related to issues of, of federal and state funding where you have federal funding that, that flows through the state and helps support state programs and trying to keep that appropriately segregated and, and the duties and powers up related to that money uh, appropriately dispersed. Bills are moving from committees to the floor. There was a bill that came out of committee this week that would allow voters to decide whether to make several statewide offices, gubernatorial appointments. Tell it, us about that. There are a couple of bills that, that deal with those issues, which would put it to a vote of the people. Uh, one which passed through uh, the Senate General Government Committee, for example, uh, would leave it up to the governor to appoint uh, the superintendent of public instruction, as well as the, the commissioner of labor and the commissioner of insurance. Uh, commissioner of labor, uh, Mark Costello, supports that bill. Uh, he believes it's something uh, that would be more efficiently and effectively done uh, if it were in the governor's hands. Uh, there are those, however, who point to the state's populist history uh, and the desire for the voters to have direct control and involvement in selecting these individuals who would prefer to see it left up to uh, the voters to decide. Ultimately, it will be the voters who will decide uh, because it will take a constitutional amendment in order for those to become appointed positions. Speaker Shannon's bill to increase the requirements for food stamps also passed out of committee. Yes, this is something we've been hearing talk about since back in the summer during an interim study. And there, there are a number of concerns involved here. Uh, one of the more central ones relates to the assets of the individual who might be applying for the benefits. This bill, I believe, limits someone to having $5,000 in savings. If they have more than that, they, they may not be able to apply and, and to receive the benefit. Uh, the proponents say, look, if someone has this much money, they, they really don't need the benefits. Uh, the opponents, however, point out that um, that money which the individual or family has saved may be important in providing health care, uh, buying school supplies and school clothes, and they are still need in public assistance, uh, in need of public assistance. So I think we'll see some more hashing out of that bill before a final version is put on the governor's desk. There are several gun-related bills. One that passed out of committee and advanced is one that would allow teachers who are trained to have guns in the classroom. Yes, Representative Mark McCullough started talking about this uh, piece of legislation back before the start of the legislative session, and, and the idea on one hand is rather simple. Uh, that you provide teachers the appropriate training on, on how to handle a weapon, uh, particularly in a more unique setting, in this case a classroom, uh, and then allow them to carry that weapon in the classroom to defend themselves and to defend their students. Uh, a, a little school near my hometown of Vernon, Texas, has had this policy in place for a number of years. Uh, and other districts, other states, and school districts across, across the country are looking at it. Uh, the bill goes to the floor and we'll see where it goes from there. Sean Ashley from eCapital, thank you. You're very welcome.